Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. Lee's, uh, not Lee's path. We are on Lucas's path again. Okay, yep. Picking right back up where we left off with Lucas. If my voice sounds a little bit different, guys, it's because I'm sick. I've got like a sore throat. I'm sore all over, but I know I'm still bringing content to you guys. So, you know, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Oh my. Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's friggin' go. All right. Okay. His ears twitch and his tail flicks anxiously about, his smile wavering slightly, but he's waiting for confirmation from me, almost like he's not sure how he should be acting. I guess it must be hard on him. He doesn't seem like he's had a lot of friends before. Or a lot of like in that regard. Yeah, it is. Thanks for taking me to the library today. I really had a good time. That quells the more negative reactions he was having, and he turns away bashfully, almost looking embarrassed but still happy. It reminds me a lot about it reminds me a lot of how Lucas reacted to compliments at the library. Or how he acted when he forgot to ask my name. Do you like the library? Yeah. I don't really have I don't really leave room often, but leave my room often, but when I do, it's mostly to go to the library. It's calming there. Why do you what do you do there? Read mostly. I told you I love to read. Whether to learn or just to find a story. Do you have any specific genres you like? Mostly just fantasy, I guess. It's so fun and interesting. I know that sounds stupid, but sometimes I just want to find an escape from everything. Confused by the sudden shift at the end, I glanced toward the fox only to see him fidgeting with his ears, thankfully not tugging them yet. I'm prepared to stop the conversation there to give Lucas some room, but he continues it before I can. What about you? Do you have any books you like to read? It's such a simple question that I'm having difficulty answering it. It's not that it's particularly hard to answer, but that I'm not even sure what I could what I could put there at all. Um, I'm not really sure. I really some I read sometimes and play some games, but I've never really had a proper hobby. Not like a reading club or anything. I was hoping I could find something here. It causes his eyebrows to furrow, deep in thought. And I expect him to invite me to his book club, but he doesn't. Which I'm thankful for, because I don't know if I want to commit, commit that much to books. Why don't you get off this topic and end the conversation on a high note? I say one last thing about, about our trip. You're a great tutor. You made everything easy to understand. He doesn't respond, but the twirling of his tail and the soft flicking of his ears shows me all that I need to see. I'm once again glad that he wears his emotions on his sleeve. In that growing silence, we retreat into a warm, quiet ambiance. The other's presence destroys the need for words. Oh my, what a room. The first thing I notice as we enter Lucas's apartment is the overpowering smell of fox. It lasts only a moment before somehow fading away like it wasn't there. Sorry about that. The neutralizer doesn't remove the scent from around the door very well. I hope that wasn't too bad. There's a looming aura of worry to the fox, and we haven't even taken a step inside his apartment yet. His bad habits are resurfacing at a rapid pace, but his, he's refraining from anything too bad. He quickly carries on, his voice squeaking in his, in his usually hidden southern drawl and sneaks in as he tries to over-explain the scent remover. My roommate complained about my scent at first, but I wasn't... But I wasn't used to using any kind of neutralizer, so I'm pretty bad with it. You're fine. Don't worry about it. I still feel strange to, to be to be the supportive rock, but I think I'm doing a good job by the way he perks up whenever I compliment or reassure him. He leads me further in, and I'm almost blown away by how much bigger his apartment is than mine. He has a very similar bed, bed setup, bed set but across from them is an entire kitchen area. He catches my gawking and quickly explains. One second, guys. Okay. <clears throat> oh, um... Apartments on the first two floors have a kitchen, bathroom, and larger space, but they cost more. My my parents wanted to get me this so I wouldn't have to use one of the shared kitchens or showers. I'm really thankful for that. It's massive! My room only has enough room for beds, a desk, and a closet. His ears, his ears press down against his head, and he looks almost ashamed, as if he's embarrassed that his room is so good. How dare you have a nicer room than me? <laughs> Sorry, I must be gloating. I didn't mean to, I swear. What? No, you weren't. At least, I don't think you were. It didn't sound like it. It didn't sound like it to me. It didn't sound like it to me. I was just saying how great this room is. Kind of wish I was living in one of these instead. But you don't have a roommate. I bet that's pretty nice. Not as nice as you think. It gets really lonely at night sometimes. It makes me miss home. At the mention of home, an empathetic glint shines from his eyes before he swiftly looks away, a melancholic shade across his face. I miss home a lot, too, but I call my parents every night. It helps a lot. His voice is barely above a whisper by the end of that sentence, like he was too scared to say it, as if saying it would make how far away he is from his family feel even more real. His family probably doesn't even live in Everwinter like mine does. I begin to reach out to comfort him before he suddenly turns around, a smile on his face and voice coming, 
coming out way too loud for how close we are. If you ever need company, you can always come down here. We have a lot of room, as you can see. He gestures to the room around us, and it sinks in just how big this room is. Not just in how much more facilities it has, but also in general space. The beds have a bigger gap between them. There's more room to, there's more room to walk. It's just big. Lucas sits on the edge of the bed, his bag missing from his shoulders. I must have taken it off while I was looking around the room. Not wanting to intrude, I awkwardly stand in the middle of the room, wondering if I'm allowed to sit at the desk or not. Taking a chance, I place my own bag on top of the desk and take a seat. Unlike the door, the desk has a light scent of something else. Likely a must lid, but the neutralizer has covered up most of it, so I can't get a clear picture. I bet Lucas's nose would be able to pick it up. Those noses notice everything. You don't use this desk often, do you? No, I prefer the library or my bed. The desk does. The desk feels very small, and I have a lot of papers. It's useless for me. Looking over at Lucas, he doesn't seem to be doing anything other than resting on the bed and watching me. It would be unnerving, but Lucas has a strange aura about him. Innocent, but not naive. It feels like he's just more of an odd duck than being creepy. I wonder if Lee and Oscar think I'm, uh, think I'm both innocent and naive. I don't like to think of myself as innocent, but maybe that is naive of me? Thinking of Lee and Oscar does bring up a topic I wanted to ask Lucas about at some point. Do you still not get along well with the others? You mentioned at the library that you didn't mesh well with them, and I was hoping that maybe you did now. Lucas's ears fold down, his tail curls around to his front, as if he's using it as a teddy bear to comfort himself. He looks away and towards the door as if trying to find something else he could focus on instead of the question. Maybe I shouldn't have asked that, but before I can linger on that thought, I don't mind Lee. He's quiet and it's easy to understand, but we it is easy to understand, but we don't get along particularly well. But Lee is really nice, too. She's always helping me when I'm having trouble with He glances towards me for a second and goes silent. The only sound I can hear is the occasional brush of fur against the cotton blankets. Trouble with trouble with stuff, but she's not someone I'd want to hang out with alone. None of them really are. When he doesn't continue, it's very apparent he's making an obvious attempt at dodging the full question. I consider just leaving it as it is, but if I ask, I might be able to help him. If I can help, I have to try. What about Oscar? His ears flatten against his skull. His eyes shift downward at the ground, and his entire demeanor seems to slump downwards. He looks like a puppet. A puppet whose strings have been cut. He confuses me and is frustrating. How does he confuse you? He seems pretty straightforward to me. No, it's hard to explain. I can't tell when he's being serious or just joking. Oh, yeah, I struggle with that too. I can't tell if he's actually trying to flirt with me or not. No, you don't understand. He mutters that last part quietly. I want to respond, but it's clear he doesn't want me to hear that. I want to help him with this. I get get him to make me understand, but he needs to feel more comfortable with me first. Then, then I hope that he'll let me. Then I hope he'll let me in. What about me? Huh? You don't seem too uncomfortable with me. At least I hope you aren't. It was just a little joke to try and lighten the mood, but Lucas only goes wide-eyed and perks his ears up. In fact, his entire body goes taut in a matter of seconds, and he jumps onto his feet. No. Even with my small ears, I still have to press them down to avoid Lucas's booming voice. The same voice he used in the library earlier. I hope his neighbors don't file a complaint. I'm so... I'm sorry. You don't make me uncomfortable. You really don't. You're the first friend I've had in a long time, and you always go out of your way to make sure I'm doing okay. <sighs> the intense aura he's radiating quickly dims, leaving him looking like a hurt puppy. His drooping ears and tense jaw shows how much he's just how much he's struggling to hold back tears. I didn't notice his heavy breathing, but now that there's a, si there's a silence between us, it sounds near booming like it's echoing the large room. Grabbing his hand softly, I gently stroke across his knuckles, hoping this can calm him down. I think it works as his breathing slowly quiets down until it's just a light husk, barely audible even in the silence. Now it feels like a good time to ask about something more immediate. Why are you so much more comfortable with me? Is it just because I make sure you're okay? It catches him off guard, causing him to stall, but unlike the previous moments of vulnerability, He's lacking that strained tension he had during his uproar. His eyes are equally wide, those amber eyes still burning even in the dim house light. Um... His hands begin to fidget, but in a different way than usual. They don't look like they're going to attack his ears anytime soon. Instead, they're just ringing in front of him like a guy who just got caught kissing a boy by his mother. It's one of those moments when I remember just how cute Lucas can be and how much of an open book he is, especially with his increasingly reddening ears. You don't need a therapist to tell he's embarrassed about it. Uh... A distinct clicking noise drags my attention towards the source of the sound, but I manage to catch Lucas's ears flicking towards the noise as well. One second, guys. Okay. Looking towards the door, the rattling of the handle is enough of a signal that Lucas's roommate must be home. He must have realized this too, too as he yanks his hand out of mine with such urgency that it makes me a little worried about who exactly is coming in. 
My worries of a potentially homophobic individual are put on hold when I finally catch sight of him. Oh, God! <sighs> wow, he's fabulous! <laughs> Just look at him! Oh, my God! The first thing I notice is that he's tall. Almost as tall as Oscar, but without any of the muscle. And he's a Pine Martin. The second thing I notice is what confuses me about Lucas's reaction. And his right ear is a very gaudy ear cuff and chain. Silver and... Silver and standing out very prominently as it reflects the light from the ceiling. It gives him a very flamboyant look. The rest of his outfit is a loose purple shirt that doesn't even reach all the way down, allowing me to catch a little peek of his chocolate brown fur above a simple pair of black yoga pants. I'm gonna pretend I don't see his white underwear peeking nonchalantly above his waistband. Oh my. Okay, I'm on. I, I don't care if it's a stereotype, he fits the description. I'm gonna do very, very flamboyant voice for him. God, today was a mess. The guys are being such drama queens tonight. Trust me when I say I could not have gotten out of there faster. He hasn't noticed either of us yet as he, hang, as he hangs an expensive-looking handbag on the back of the door, a hook that I didn't even notice was missing from my room. Expecting him to properly enter the room and notice us, I'm once again left bewildered as he continues to adjust his hair in the mirror that's equally missing on my own door. I haven't always been very good at using my gaydar, but sometimes you don't even need to use one. So that just leaves me even more puzzled that Lucas has rushed to distance himself from me. Was he embarrassed? That's probably it. The boy still hasn't left his ears after all and is beginning to peek through his cheek fur. Lulu, still asleep? You asleep? Finally catching on that there's not something unusual going on, the Martin peeks his head towards us and his eyes immediately go wide. Completely forgetting about fixing his hair, the tall Pine Martin immediately rushes over to us, looking absolutely elated at my presence. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I didn't see you there. You must be Wallace. Lucas has told me so much about you. He has? We've only known each other for three days. Oh yes, but Lucas couldn't stop talking about you. We've been roommates for over two years and he's never really made a friend, so you can imagine he's pretty eager. Lucas looks to be growing progressively more embarrassed, so he's sinking himself down into the bed as if a family member was telling everyone about the time he did something stupid in elementary school. Well, I like to think he's made a new friend. He's made a few friends. So I've heard. He's mentioned Lily and the other boys a few times. Nowhere near as much as you, though. He leans in closer and whispers the next part into my ear, as if Lucas's large fox ears wouldn't be able to pick it up anyway. He's especially enamored with how you helped him on Monday. It's very cute. A light whimper can be heard from Lucas's direction, but he makes no attempt to silence his roommate. I'm not sure if this is just usual for them, and he's given up, or if he's letting him tell me. Martin decides to give Lucas his plight to give in to Lucas's plight and back off, shifting himself to a straighter posture before reaching out a paw towards me. My eyes catch the meticulously groomed nails and fur that I'll, that'll, that'll, even, pick, that'll even put Lucas's to shame. My name's Are. Are? I'm an Are? Is that his name? Are? My name's Are. I already know your name, so no need to introduce yourself. Ah? Yes. Oh, ah, okay. It's French. Everyone else just pronounces it Ari. So don't be ashamed to call me that, I don't mind. Pine Martin's voice doesn't have any kind of French accent that I know of. The only immediately noticeable thing is his voice has the surprising amount of twang. The sheer fun buoyance coming off, his surprise, off him is surprising. I didn't know there were people out, people this open. It's really refreshing. I've never come across any gay guys before college, or at least any that, any that were open. Alright, aw. Alright, aw it is. Great. So did I interrupt your date? I can go out if you need. Rocco's is having a welcoming party, and the cute freshmen are always a little too eager. Whatever Awe whatever just said causes Lucas to instantly shoot right, right, right back up to his feet, panic oozing out of his pinprick eyes and erect ears. It's not a date! Fox's voice is once again disproportionately loud for how small of a space we're in, causing myself to jump with a start. I'm gonna say Awe. Awe sounds... Hmm. Alright. Ari, on the other hand, is unfazed by the sudden burst of sound. Still dazzled, I realize I should probably intercept to stop Lucas from blowing out my eardrums. I had a pretty rough day, so Lucas offered to let me hang out with him until I felt better. We just got back from the library. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. You're such a sweetheart. Isn't he adorable? Yeah, he's pretty great. I didn't think Lucas could get more red, but he's proving me incorrect. His flushed skin is easily visible through his dark fur. His tail, on the other hand, is thrashing about wildly. Not aggressively like when he's angry, but closer to a wag. So baffling that someone so loud could be so demure, but Ari is right. Lucas can be pretty adorable, even if he doesn't. Even if I don't always understand why he does some of the things he does. You're pretty cute too. Very kind. The guys at the club would love you. 
the guys at the club like any guy who isn't outright ugly. Looks like Lucas is finally joining the conversation, but his entire demeanor still has that twinge of awkward embarrassment to it. His tone is sharp, but not unfriendly. It's almost reassuring to hear him back to his usual tone, as strange as that tone can be. True, but that's because most guys have something going for them. More like they're desperate. Oh, they're not the ones who are desperate here. A knowing smile crosses Ari's face, and I can't help but wonder about the implication of that. Lucas doesn't look offended by it at all, but his eyes do shift away when he catches my eyes. The dynamic feels comfortable, but this, keeps, this kind of teasing must be pretty common between them. It feels brotherly in a way I wasn't expecting. So, what's his club? Oh, just my theater club. They come around sometimes, well, the boys do at least. He gives an innocent smile, which is likely hiding less than innocent implications around it. Looking up at him this close causes me to notice something I didn't before. On the ear, on the ear lacking the chain sits two earring studs. He lets out a giggle, and I'm pretty sure it's because he caught me staring. The way his eyes keep contact with mine sends a shiver through my spine. He reminds me, he reminds me of Oscar with a lot more subtlety, or maybe he's more like a flamboyant Lee. Regardless, it would be disingenuous to say he isn't attractive. I know, it's such a stereotype, but what can I say? I love the attention. For the record, only half the guys there are gay. It's not all gay guys. Isn't Travis and Connor by... I didn't say they were all straight, sweetie. You slept with Callum on Monday. He's straight. He closes his eyes during it. Plus, we didn't fuck. It was just a BJ. Who's even left? Hunter's straight and has a stable girlfriend. She's the, she's the lead, by the way. Walter. Uh, it's Wallace. Yeah, but you look more like a Walter, so I can say... So can I call you that? Sure. Great, I knew you'd like. If things with Lulu here don't work out, I just broke up with Noel, so I'll be free. I sleep around on you and we're not dating. We just met and I don't want a boyfriend. Excuse you, I sleep around with permission. I'm not gonna cheat. Ari doesn't acknowledge the latter half of Lucas's objection, but he does flash me a smile, making it pretty clear he's just teasing Lucas. At least I think that's what he's going for. And you break up with Noel. Then you break up with Noel for cheating. Yes, but he took a guy on a date. Very different. Is it? The banter between the tone feels familiar. It's rather soothing. Lucas even seems to have fully calmed down. Ari's teasing comment didn't even cause him to get flustered anymore. Can you can you take a shower, by the way? You're beginning to get through the neutralizer. Oh, am I? Excuse me. <sniffs> Without any kind of extravagant reaction or any offense, Lucas gets up and quickly trods off to a closed door on the other side of the room, only looking back for a moment to give me a soft smile and wave before closing the door behind him. He's certainly unique, isn't he? But he's such a good kid. Can't believe we're the same age sometimes. Definitely an odd duck, but he's really sweet if you know if if you get to know him. He was definitely intimidating at first. I can imagine. If he was anything like when I first met him, that is. Can I have my seat back, by the way? Lulu won't mind if you sit on his bed. Alright guys, I'm all... You pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you're super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye